Hi, welcome to Hangar 37. My name is John, and tonight we're going to do the assembly of the Free Wing B-17 Flying Fortress. First thing I'm going to suggest is go take the elevator and match your paints up. And in my case, I go to my local Ace Hardware, and I get these little samplers. They're about three or four dollars, and I match up the paint. I do this with every plane and they match them up really good so uh, I have that on hand I got a feeling I'm going to need it because there's a lot of space in between these uh, where these motors are supposed to go on I'm probably going to have to use some foam filler in there uh, there's like a 330 seconds gap in, uh, on a couple of these which I'm not real happy with but I'll make do uh, with what I've got here one of the things, the quality is not typical free wing. Make sure you check everything. The motor mounts, one of them was really loose. Actually, two of them here are real loose. This one real bad. I can wiggle it around. And I thought maybe it was just the, the mount, but it's not. It's, uh, I've got to take the whole motor out and uh, find out uh, what, why this is wiggling around in here. Uh, I would not want to try and fly it like this. Uh, there's either a bad bearing in here or it's not seated in here properly and it, it would go bad quickly. So I'm going to take this apart, figure out why this motor's loose and I'll be back to you in just a bit. Okay, I'm back and the problem I had on this motor I had to take it off there's two little set screws in here Allen set screws and they were both loose I mean at least a quarter to three-eighths of a turn so it's tight now and I'll, I'll put that back in the pod I'm going to have to go through and check every one of these and make sure they're all tight. Not too happy about this, but to be on the safe side, that's the right thing to do. If one's bad, chances are there's a couple loose screws in here. And uh, not up here, in the, in the plane. So, I'm going to take a break again, go through all of this, and... Uh, I'll be back to you in just a bit. Okay, I'm back. Ran into some more problems. Uh, you got to take the motor cowlings off to get to the motor. And as I showed you before, I took these all off. Took the four screws and took it off. I found a better way to do it. Make sure you tighten all these four of these screws down for the motor mount and then what I do is I actually just poked through the foam to get to those Allen screws and this is the third one and I was able to get in here and tighten them down and they were loose the motors weren't real shaky but they were loose at least a quarter turn so I tightened them down and then I noticed the glues are uh, the plywood that's holding the motor cowling one is just barely hanging on so I'm going to glue that watch for that check all of this check all the screws and make sure they're tight so far, everything's been loose. And some of these are about a quarter turn. You don't want to over tighten them, but you want them tight. So I will be gluing this down. The first two I did, they were okay. But this one I'm going to have to glue down and I'll have to check on the fourth one. So I'm going to continue going through all of this and I'll be back to you in just a bit. 
Okay, I'm back. I finished up all the motor pods. So make sure you double check all of that. I'm not completely through all of this, but as I'm going through, I'm finding other things. Uh, I have a, a bad elevator on here. They've got nylon hinges in here. It's a foam hinge with a nylon, nylon hinge insert, which is a great idea and it's great. This one works great. This one was epoxied. Somehow the, the epoxy got in the hinge and it, it goes up okay. And then it, when it goes down, it, it's hitting something. I scraped as much of the epoxy off as I could. And I mean, that's as far as it's gonna go. I mean, I can go, it snaps. So I was thinking of cutting them out, but I did, I got this plane from Motion RC. And I get all my planes that I can from them. If they've got it, I buy it from them. So I bought this from them. They're a great company. I call, I sent an email last night, about 10 o'clock when I discovered this. They shipped it out this morning. I'm gonna have uh, the, uh, the new elevator tomorrow. So that uh, says something about their customer service. And uh, I talked to Wayne over there and uh, he's awesome. Alpha's awesome, uh, Matt's, uh, uh, Brad, all the guys over there, and they're all knowledgeable. But I just want to give a, a shout out and a heads up to Motion for taking care of this. Hopefully I'm not going to run into any more problems with this plane. If I do, I will get in touch with them and uh, try and get it solved. Uh, this is something that I can fix and most anybody that when you get this, if you're checking for this stuff, you can take care of it before it turns into a problem. So, that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to let you go for the evening and I'm going to pick this up tomorrow and hopefully get the wing epoxy and the motors on and then uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to put the pods on tonight. First thing I'm going to do Get this tape, get the paint off where I want the epoxy to stick. And I use packaging tape for that. Works very nicely. I'm using six minute epoxy. And I hope I got enough time. second round of epoxy. Now this I got to be a little careful on because of the wires. Okay. turns out. 
I'm gonna have to put a lot of filler in here. Okay, once again, we're gonna take a little break here and uh, let this all dry up. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. I've got everything hooked up and surprisingly everything works. I've got my flaps. Okay, I got three position flaps. I'm about 22 degrees, about 20 degrees on the uh, takeoff flaps, about 45 degrees on my uh, landing flaps. And I'm going to do a rudder mix, but I don't have that set in yet because I don't have the rudder on. Uh, ailerons work. They need to be reversed though, but they seem to be working. I got three rates on here. Okay. Servos seem to be working okay, and the landing gear. And I've got a rudder and wheel, but I separated the servos and I used the wheel on aux 4 and I did a mix so that I can use, I can adjust my landing wheel with my knob, my right roll knob and I can adjust my rudder with the rudder. Uh, also got a throttle cut on here. Uh, always use it. Obviously, I don't have, don't ever ever do this with the props on. So uh, you've got separate alignment with the wheel and the rudder. You locked up pretty nice. Okay, that's it uh, for the wiring. I'm going to take a break here and finish this all off, get it all put together and uh, uh, tuned up and everything and I'll come back and we'll do a review on this. So I'll be back in a little bit then. Okay, back working on the electrical wiring for the wing. At first I thought it was going to be a real problem getting all these wires in this little groove here. But as you can see, I got them in here. Now on the uh, connections for the motor to the ESC, I went red, red, black, black, and blue to the middle one on both the inboard and outboard. Now on this particular one, and I'll show you, this I've got to all rewire yet. But uh, they do all fit in here. I had to trim a little bit back up in here so that one of the wires slipped up in here so that it got all flush. So that wing's all done. That's the right uh, outboard inboard. And what I did is I marked I marked the ESC's right outboard, right inboard to make sure I got it right. So I'm going to flip that up and start working on the left wing. Okay, I'm on the last leg of gluing this on. And once again, I'm using contact cement. Actually, it turned out pretty nice. Uh, you can hardly see that. I didn't think the wires were all going to fit in. I may touch up this here with gray paint. I bought some matching paint. 
but yeah all in all I think uh, pretty nice I just hope I got every all the wiring correct otherwise I gotta take this apart that's why I use contact cement let this all dry up and set and we'll come back and do the top side electronics with the uh, hook and the receiver up and getting the uh, ESC set in place so we'll take a break and we'll be back in a little bit okay I'm back after quite a bit of work on this wiring had to set everything up I'm gonna take this off as you can see here I have quite a bit of wiring to do I marked the ESC's right outboard right inboard left inboard left outboard okay the uh, signal wires bunch in together here and I put them together with the nylon tie so they don't separate them that goes into your receiver into your throttle channel uh, I had to use some extension on these back wires I separated the rudder and the wheel so there's three channels actually coming off of here I've got my rudder elevator and uh, auxiliary four for my wheel control uh, I have a mix set up that it works with the rudder and there's a video I'll, I'll attach a video uh, link I'll attach on how you do that a uh, little bit of a trying to figure out how to do this and, and preserve the space and not have a cluster of wires uh, I use nylon ties and I also use not uh, nylon strapping tape uh, on these here to make sure they don't come apart so uh, my satellite is going to go back up in here on that tape and I'm going to have that this way whereas this signal is going to be this way so hopefully that'll work uh, I think this space wise is going to go together pretty nicely and uh, I am going to electrical tape the, this connection here and this connection here just to keep them from coming apart when you're pulling a, a, a battery apart or something so uh, I'm going to put this back and then I'm going to tape that up and try and get this wing attached there's quite a cluster of wires there alright so I will turn this upside down it in my plane stand here. I'm going to break away. I'm going to check the manual and see what size screws go where. I uh, hope it says in there. I didn't see it the first time, but I didn't uh, read it real close. So I'm going to take a break, check that out, and I'll be back to you in just a bit. Okay, before I attach the wing, I am going to hook up the batteries so let's hope it stayed bound there's one set three beeps in my music and it looks like everything's okay and I've got my throttle cut on it They're uh, hooked up. Now let's check the flaps. 
I think you can see this. Yeah, let's see. I might have to adjust. No, they look pretty good. I got them kind of steep. I'm going to have to probably play with that. I will have a rudder mix with that once I get it all put together and up in the air. Okay. Ailerons. Ailerons are working. Let's try the landing gear. Everything works. So I will attach the wing. Normally I wouldn't recommend this, but if you're good at the feel and you watch, you won't overscrew. As a newbie, I did this and I screwed right through the foam, so. Uh, if you're new at this, I would say stop really short of it and use the hand screwdriver. plates that you're supposed to use on the tail section and it, ply, it screws into plywood so they give you wood screws so you got to be especially careful not to over tighten these because you'll strip out okay again don't uh, over screw it if anything touch up uh, some of these joints with some CA on it and uh, rather than strip that out I normally would have put some contact cement in here and I guess I'm being a little lazy at this point and I hope I don't pay the price for it in the future when I'm flying I don't think this tail will come off though. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little piece of strapping tape on that servo connection. And just press it all down. Okay, we are all set. Now there's one more little piece I've got to put on here. So, I'm going to take a break and I'll get this all done and be back to you. Okay, I'm going to put my markers on for my CG points. I use sewing pins. I have an assortment of colors. In this particular case, I've got red dots on the wings, so I'm going to use red red pins to mark my CG's. The CG is on, on this is 95 to 105. So I'm going to set it at 100. I'm going to want this a little nose heavy. So if I set it at 100 and it's a little tail heavy when I, when I go to I'll set my fingers just slightly to the forward of the pin. Now, I cut these 
basically at about a quarter inch. Cut them at about a quarter inch. And I use a needle nose and super heat. So I don't know that you can see this, but I've got a, I use a pen to mark that. And then I put a, a, a dollop or dab of super glue into the impression that I made with the pen. And then I just use my needle nose. Set that in there. Press it down so about half of it sticks out. Put that one in there. Stick that one halfway. Take you off of here give you a close-up of it and there you go that's at 100 millimeters back from right here which is what the book says don't go by that religiously because uh, notoriously the CG's on any of these foamies are not 100% accurate if anything, uh, try to go a little nose heavy the first time. If you're tail heavy, uh, you're going to have a problem landing it. It'll take off real easy, but you'll have a problem landing it. Okay, uh, looking good so far. And get back to you with the review. Okay, I kind of made a newbie mistake here. You got this little plastic piece that you're supposed to put in here before you put the tail section on. I don't know if you can see this or not. This is supposed to go in here like this. This is a real flimsy. I took a piece of foam and I cut out because this was so I cut a piece of foam in there just to keep it, give it support so that when it sits in there it looks fills the gaps on the sides. Now I might be able to get this in here. Okay. You're just going to run a little bead of CA on here. Well, that was one mistake solved. So, back to putting the guns on, as long as I'm back here. Put this one on. That's all there is to it. There's two little holes, uh, two little prongs on there that you just press into the foam. The book says to put a gun in here. And that's the only cooling intake on this whole plane. So, I'm debating whether I should or not. I guess they didn't call it Flying Fortress for nothing. A lot of armament on this plane. This is the gunner, this is the bombardier. Sits up here with the English bombing sites. Englishmen invented that. Changed the war. Okay. Looking pretty good. I'm going to save the props for last. We'll do balance check later. Alright, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna let everything dry up and we'll come back and do the review. Okay, I'm gonna show you real quickly what I did is we can get these batteries out of the way. 
I took the two end boards and connected them to the Dean's connector and I took the two out boards connected them to the other Dean's connector so what will happen is I have the throttle cut I'm going to turn the throttle on and you can see all four are turning Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the outboards. You see that the inboards are So if I now I switch the battery over. Nine, eight, seven. So we're gonna arm. Motors armed. And we're gonna. There's my outboards. And they're all pretty smooth. All right, well that's basically what I did. I'm gonna uh, heat shrink those up together and uh, then I will do my my CG test on this. I'm using a Admiral three cell 2235C. And we'll mount those up front here all the way forward okay one of the things you may want to do comes in handy is to do uh, a kit for heat shrinks I bought uh, individual packs and then I bought a fishing tackle box a big one and uh, I got all the different sizes in here different colors and everything it really comes in handy and if you're gonna take this sport serious uh, I, you're gonna need it uh, and it's good to keep everything organized so, scratch the heat shrinks. I just wanted an opportunity to show you my kit. So, where is my tape? Here's my tape. Make sure they're all tight. Normally, I always try to use heat shrink. That's the best. But I'm too close to this foam for my torch. And I don't want to melt part of the plane, of course. And if you do it this way, and you happen to burn up an ESC, you've got power on both sides. It's going to be a lot easier to bring her in than if you had just one side pushing the plane. You'd be fighting it really hard to keep her stable. Okay. There we go, inboard, outboard, motor connections. Just want to remind you to put an extension on your receiver bind plug. You, otherwise, you're going to have to take the wing off to bind it if you lose bind for whatever reason. So I think we are all set and get the battery in here. Flip it upside down. You only got one strip in there of Velcro. And uh, I guess if you're not going to do any 3D flying, you should be okay if you just fly scale. The battery shouldn't move around too much. There's really not anything in here, there's no stopper on here. On the hatch cover so let's get her hooked up and it really doesn't matter which way you hook this up either battery to either side I'll show you real quickly how nice everything is 
set up in here. At first it was a little daunting, but after I got everything tied off with nylon ties and that, everything was pretty good. So that all fits in there real nice. Make sure, make sure you put your landing gear up when you do your CG balancing because the wheels come forward, it's going to move your center of gravity. So we will bring our gear up and I got those little pins in there and I'm a little nose heavy. Yeah, I'm pretty close to dead on. That looks really close. I think it's close enough that I can put it in the air and manage it. So, that's it. Motors are off. I am going to put that gear back down. Okay. All right, let's do our final walk around on this. I'll give you my opinions. To start with, I got to give a big shout out to Motion RC. I've been waiting on this plane for about two months. I had it on the email me went in list I got an email at 10 o'clock Sunday ordered it right away and I had it Tuesday morning pretty good uh, I live in Wisconsin and they ship out of Illinois which helps and UPS was the delivery carrier on this got it in started working on it right away so a uh, big shout out to Motion RC and the guys over there uh, quality uh, Really, really good quality. Uh, typical free wing quality. Um, not. I had a little problem with a with a uh, elevator and uh, Wayne over at Motion. I sent him an email Monday night. Wednesday I had. Yesterday I had the uh, elevator. So can't complain see how she flies I had a little trouble getting the motor pods on I had a couple gaps in them and uh, I was thinking about filling them and painting and that and I thought I looked at my films earlier films I, I took on this and you can't really notice it so I think in the pictures and, and videos on the Maiden you won't notice any imperfections on it even though there are a few on there uh, nice details though on the guns, uh, the uh, window decals, uh, the Thunderbird decal. I think you can see that. That's nice. And the retracts are nice. Uh, I kind of like to see the metal housing on that, uh, but uh, we'll see how it holds up. They're not too expensive, and it looks like they're pretty easy to replace, uh, which I, I've had to do in the past. Uh, so, um, once again, this is John from Hangar 37. I want to thank you for watching and watch for the Maiden video to come soon on this. I wish all you pilots out there blue skies and calm winds. <laughs>